Good morning, everyone. This is Michelle Siquedos with the Campaign for College Opportunity, and this morning we're glad to have many of you join us on a webinar to discuss our latest report, Meeting Compliance But Missing the Mark. It's a progress report, what I'd like to call a snapshot in time, that really looks at how are we doing in terms of implementing historic transfer reform legislation passed in 2010, and giving you a snapshot update of our progress to date. Um, again, my name is Michelle Siquedos. I'm the Executive Director of the Campaign for College Opportunity. I think many of you on this call are familiar with our work, but for those that may be new to the Campaign for College Opportunity's work, our mission is really focused on two most important things, to increase the number of Californians that have a chance to go to college in our state and that have a chance to actually complete, walk across that graduation stage with a certificate or diploma so that we can have the educated workers that our economy requires. In order to really help move our mission forward and strengthen California, two years ago we worked very closely with Senator Alex Padilla in the legislature to champion historic transfer reform. Many of you know that community colleges are critical and essential in our state. Over one and a half million students in any given year attend a California community college. It's the largest system in the world. And many students go with the intent to transfer to a four-year university and get a degree. Uh, what we knew was that there was an unacceptably low transfer rate. Uh, a study done by Nancy Shulock uh, a few years ago, Divided We Fail, uh, found that after six years, only 23% of students that were hoping to transfer um, actually did. And we think that that is too low. So we worked very closely again with Senator Alex Padilla with the amazing leadership of then-Chancellor Jack Scott from the California Community College System and current Chancellor Charlie Reed from the California State University System and the incredible student leaders from CSSA, the Cal State Student Association, and the Student Senate for California Community Colleges to champion reform that would increase significantly the number of students that actually transfer from our community colleges into our four-year universities. Um, and what you see in front of you is what we hope to achieve, that we would make sure that the requirements to transfer aligned statewide. Um, I like to say that there was, in fact, kind of a hodgepodge of transfer requirements depending on what community college you go to and what four-year university you want to transfer to. And this effort was really to align those requirements across the state of California, regardless of community college that you attend, and to ensure that students who invest quite a bit of time, money, and resources into getting uh, to transfer can earn a, tr a degree while they're at it. Um, so this legislation created an associate degree for transfer at California community colleges. Most and just as importantly, uh, the legislation that was proposed through Senate Bill 1440 requires that the Cal State University um, receive these associate degree and transfer graduates and guarantee them admission to the system with junior standing. What we found was that many students, unfortunately, had maybe accrued a lot of units um, and might not necessarily be guaranteed admission or not guaranteed junior standing. They might be what we call sophomore plus. They might have a lot more uh, requirements to fulfill. And as Hi, I Michelle. stated, yes. This is Alex. Hi, Senator Padilla. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Okay, well, perfect. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Well, great timing. Um, we're glad to have you on the call. We know that you've stepped away from another important board meeting uh, to join us. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, and I'll pick up when you're done. Senator Padilla, thanks for all the amazing work and your leadership in making transfer reform in California happen. You can go ahead, Senator. Nikki, can we unmute Senator Padilla? Yes, I think I'm back. Okay, great. Go ahead. So, uh, so, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, I, I just have a few minutes here. I'm on the East Coast on uh, uh, other travel at my alma mater, uh, MIT. But 
I appreciate, Michelle, the work that you've been doing and, and the value and the timing of this call as we just started a new session. You know, one of the things I uh, get asked about regularly by my colleagues is, you know, so we did the transfer bill a couple of years ago, assigned into law, how's it working out, and, you know, what else we need to, uh, to do to advance the spirit and intent of the legislation. Um, so as I'm sure you'll discuss on this call, the uh, Legislative Analyst Office uh, has issued a report with sort of initial uh, uh, success that's been outlined. Uh, but it's it's been a mixed bag, to be honest with you. You have some community colleges out there that are really stepping up, uh, and some that uh, have a lot of work to do. Uh, and similarly, at the CSU system, uh, a few that have done really, really well, uh, and a few that uh, we got to bring along, sort of kicking and screaming. Uh, when it comes to implementing uh, the complete vision, uh, what we laid out in uh, in the transfer bill, uh, so. You know, I wanted to just thank everybody on the call for their interest to acknowledge uh, some initial success uh, and the work that we still have laid out to you know, make sure that we have all the participating institutions, you know, fully embrace and implement 1440 and really achieve the, the goal the goal that we laid out uh, for the students of California and for our state budget, frankly, because we know that uh, students moving more efficiently through uh, the multiple segments is, is good for uh, university budgets is good for uh, our our state budget, uh, and the reason I say it's timely is we just started a new session, and you know one of the things that we look to in 1440 is the wisdom in uh, having set out some initial milestones. So we knew that uh, we gave it on, on a short time frame uh, a minimum of two pathways for each of the colleges to establish. Uh, the good news is, like I said, some have taken that and uh, have far exceeded it. Uh, some have taken that and said, well, we, we did our minimum of two, so we're done. You know, don't bother me anymore. So one of the things that we may consider either through hearings or through legislation this next year is uh, providing some additional, you know, benchmarks and maybe, uh, you know, more more required pathways and by, by one year and another milestone and out years, you know, things like that. But you know, you're, the folks on this call are the folks on the ground helping implement, helping you know, expand, helping bring the, the true opportunity and savings of time and money to our students. So just wanted to take a few minutes to be on the call as well to, to say thank you to all of you and uh, to uh, the Campaign College Opportunity for your, your ongoing leadership. Thank you, Senator. And um, I've posted now a picture of that victory of getting that legislation signed, Senate Bill 1440, that you – uh, led, led through as a big champion in the legislature. Um, but I always remember what you said when we celebrated the victory of getting the signature was ahora cumplir, which is mm -hmm. now to keep that promise. And I think you know this report provides a snapshot in terms of where we are in a moment in time. We, we know it's not the final report on status of implementation, but an important way to ensure that you know we are all paying attention, we're monitoring it. For all of us, um, the victory was never getting the legislation signed, but it's making reality um, a more effective transfer process for the students of California. So thank you okay. again for your leadership. All right, thank you, and I'm sure we'll see you soon. Absolutely. So I'd like to just give a quick overview of um, what the legislation put in place and where we are today. Um, and what you see in front of you is that the legislation um, provided the opportunity for the community college system to uh, create, along with the CSU, an implementation and oversight committee. That committee was made up of critical stakeholders from the community college, the CSU, and student leaderships from both segments to come up with the transfer model curriculum. What were these degrees for transfer going to look like? And would they be uh, deemed similar by the Cal State University? Um, so for shorthand, we uh, call transfer model curricula the TMCs. These are the pathways where students at the community college can earn an associate degree and meet the requirements for transfer with the guaranteed admission at the CSU University with junior status, as we've mentioned before. So as of February 2012, 
18 transfer model curriculums were developed by the IOC committee and the community college system. And you have a listing here of the 18 um, that were developed. So they're developed statewide, and that's a very important um, aspect. And I would say one of the big highlights and um, successes from this effort is really that the community college and Cal State leadership at the statewide level really started working on this even before the bill was signed into law, I think demonstrating huge commitment to seeing this effort through. And so I'm going to share a few key findings from the report and then turn it over to um, our leaders from both the community college and CSU system to speak a little bit more. But some of the very big successes that we saw was that there was really strong leadership and commitment from Chancellor Scott and Chancellor Reed on down to um, critical faculty leaders and administrators on moving this work forward. The Implementation and Oversight Committee met regularly for over two years now um, and worked hard to put together these transfer pathways. And in fact, they developed transfer model curricula for the 22 most commonly transferred majors. So they started where students are most interested in majoring in. They use those to develop the TMCs. And most importantly, in an era of huge budget cuts, the Cal State system um, continues to honor the transfer pathway. And even though there's an enrollment freeze for spring 2013 admission this coming spring in the Cal State system, they are going to honor that commitment of guaranteed admission to transfer eligible students through SB 1440. Now what we did in this report is we wanted to look at college by college, how were the colleges themselves doing at adopting these transfer model curriculums. So we're looking at 18 transfer model curriculum degrees being set forth by the state of California, the community college system. And there's 112 community colleges. And I know that this chart in front of you is a little bit hard to see, but that's 112 colleges across California. And we thought you would be interested specifically in seeing how is your local community college doing? How many uh, TMC pathways have they adopted for their students? And so this gives you the range. Um, the number next to the college is how many transfer model uh, degree programs are in place at that college um, available for students. This next chart shows you that there are 18 community colleges in California that have done an amazing job of implementing and putting forward the transfer degree pathways for students. From American River that has 12 degree pathways in place to Pasadena City College that has 13, um, to Fullerton that has accepted and adopted all 18 of the transfer model pathways that we are measuring against. So this is very good news. This next chart, however, shows you that there are also 18 colleges that have only adopted the minimum two degrees. Um, and the minimum two degrees was an interpretation that the legislation requires that uh, degree pathways be in place and that multiple degrees at each campus be adopted, and degrees being a plural word, um, meaning more than one. And so in, in our opinion, this is the bare minimum. Um, we certainly hope and anticipate that many of these colleges will do much more than just have two degree pathways in place, because we believe students deserve to have a lot of choice and options. On the CSU side, we did something very similar, although much more difficult to, to measure. Um, the Cal State system has 23 campuses. And the campuses um, have to deem the degree pathway similar at each individual campus. And so what you see here is a chart of all 23 campuses. The, the second column shows you how many, what percentage of degree pathways that they could offer have they deemed similar. And so this is really important because not all degree pathways are, are degrees that are offered at every single Cal State University. And so we try to make sure to measure against um, only the pathways that were available to them. Um, and so you can see that there's variation across the board, but overall the majority of Cal State campuses have deemed quite a number of uh, TMCs as similar, which means that students will have the opportunity 
to exercise all the benefits of transferring into a Cal State campus with their degree pathways. The second and third column um, point out something that, that we're certainly interested and concerned about, which is when a student has a degree, uh, an associate degree for transfer in a particular field, we want to make sure that they have as many options within that field to get a four-year degree um, in a variety of, of areas, and that they have the same sort of rights as freshmen, native freshmen to the Cal State system might have. So if a, a student, for example, gets an associate degree in business administration, uh, we want to see do they get the option to major in business administration at the four-year level, but also potentially in economics or in other fields related to business administration that a student might be interested in. So the second and third column show you that for some campuses, there's a lot of options available for uh, students, and at some campuses, there's less options available. So I'm going to show you a quick chart. This highlights um, Sonoma and Bakersfield that have 17 of the 18 degree pathways deemed as similar, that they're doing very good, and they have a lot of different pathways, 30 and 41 respectively at Sonoma and Bakersfield. Um, for students that come in in those majors. Now San Bernardino, you can see you know, they have 12 of 18 pathways, which is a little bit low and we hope will increase significantly. But they also have fewer options for students once they transfer in uh, to their program. And so that's an area where um, we think it's important to make greater progress on. So, you know, I know that I'm covering a lot of information, and you should know that the full report is available online, and this presentation will be on our website very soon. Um, but we wanted to offer recommendations. Again, this is just a snapshot in time. There's been amazing progress in the two years since the legislation was signed. But we do think that there are recommendations to be made to make this even stronger, and at the end of the day, fulfill, I think, a common goal that we all have that this become the major priority way that students transfer from the community college to the four-year university. Um, so we have recommendations for policymakers and the legislature. We think that there might be an important need to clarify a timeline and a higher benchmark for compliance in statute. So again, SB 1440 um, created this pathway, but it didn't say how many degree pathways every community college or every Cal State should have available to students. We also um, have been amazed by the incredible work of the IOC committee, and we want to have policymakers endorse the fact that the work of the IOC committee needs to continue in order to make sure um, that transfer um, is successful in our state. The next slide has recommendations for system administrators. So at the Cal State and the community college uh, chancellor level, we think that the following are important. Um, there needs to be consideration for developing degree pathways that are, um, as some leaders call, in demand. That means that those are based on workforce and employer needs um, across the state. We also think it's important that the system office clarify responsibilities and help facilitate collaboration, communication, and data sharing with local community college and Cal State campuses. And maybe most importantly, we think that there needs to be a reexamination of the 18-unit major prep for pre-transfer. So the legislation did provide some flexibility that um, some of the degree pathways could be in areas of emphasis. Um, and thus far, we've not seen a lot of flexibility in the development of degree pathways in that, in that fashion that could increase the number of options for students. For local campus leaders, um, what we've seen is that you know, the campuses that have been incredibly successful at adopting major TMC pathways for their students um, have some of these practices in place. They've adopted a model template for developing the degree design at their local campus. They've appointed someone to be the key person to tackle and uh, develop SB 1440 implementation locally. 
and they've required or provided an update um, on implementation to their local governing board. Um, as many of you know, local community colleges are governed by a local board of trustees that's elected by the public. We think that the board of trustees um, should be caring about how their local district is doing in terms of implementation of transfer reform. So those are um, a set of recommendations that we've put forward, again, as we do this two-year snapshot in time. Um, now I'm really thankful that we have Dr. Ephraim Smith, who's Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Academic Officer at the Cal State University System, on the phone with us. He will um, share his reaction and thoughts to the report and the progress to date of implementing transfer reform legislation. He also co-chairs the IOC committee that I mentioned earlier. Dr. Smith, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Michelle, for the opportunity to discuss transfer issues in the state of California. Nearly two-thirds of CSU undergraduate students come from the community colleges, so transfer is important to both our systems. It is so important that outgoing Chancellor Charles B. Reed and former community college chancellor Jack Scott put their heads together to think of a way that more students could earn associate degrees and bachelor's degrees. And they worked very closely with Sen Senator, State Senator Alex Padilla on the legislation. Looking back to 2010 when SB 1440 was signed into law, a considerable amount of hard work has led to the creation of 22 approved model curriculum, and as Michelle called, we refer to them as TMCs. For this, we need to thank the two academic senates, and especially Jim Postma of the CSU Academic Clinic and Michelle Pilati of the Community College for their hard work of bringing together faculty, many times on weekends and evenings and whatnot, to develop these curricula. Because as was mentioned in the report, this SB 1440 did not come with funding, so the systems had to come up with ways to get the work done, um, basically uh, asking faculty to develop these curriculum. Now, the benefits of TMCs are, one, the clarity, two, efficiency, and three, affordability and access. The goals of the legislation were to provide a clear and efficient pathway to a baccalaureate degree. Second, grant students an associate's degree along the pathway, and three, broad participation and improved capacity for both systems. Transfer students holding associate degrees are guaranteed priority admission to a similar program at the CSU. Students Dr. Can Smith, can I yeah. ask you to, to speak a little bit louder? I think a few of our folks are having a harder time hearing okay. you. Okay. Thanks. Um, I would encourage you all to look at our new search CSU degrees database. It, would allow, it allows transfer students to see the exact programs that match their transfer degrees. It is a win-win for students. The CSU assisted the community colleges on marketing the new degree with a guarantee website. In the first two months of the site's existence, there were more than 20,000 unique visitors. At CSU-sponsored cons counselors' conferences, this past summer, more than 5,000 high school and community college counselors were told about the new pathways, given posters, bookmarks, and other materials to take back to their schools. In addition, the CSU trained about 100 of its outreach people on transfer program. We are proud of what we've done to promote SB 1440. You can see the students are interested in obtaining an associate's degree with 60 units and then transferring to the CSU for the final 60 semester hours and being awarded a bachelor's degree. In such a new program, we've only been accepting students uh, for two semesters. First, in fall of 2012, when we had four pathways open, and for spring of 2013. For spring of 2013, we are now accepting applications for transfer from SB 1440 students only because of budget constraints. 
The, this highlights the priority the CSU and its Board of Trustees has given to SB 1440 and its implementation. As more students learn of this program, we believe it will be a success to lead to more people in California obtaining degrees and contributing to the state's workforce and economy. And Michelle, with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Eric Skinner, who's also on our call. He's the Executive Vice Chancellor of Programs for the California Community Colleges, um, and also with Ephraim Smith, serves as co-chair of the IOC committee that has made this move forward. Good morning, Michelle. Uh, nice to be with you here, and thanks for setting up this forum for us to uh, have a conversation about uh, implementation of Senate Bill 1440. Um, and uh, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for us to celebrate the, the significant progress that's been made so far, and and also to have a conversation and focus on the the, uh, the significant work ahead. And uh, you know, I I don't don't want to belabor some of the points too much because both you, Michelle, and, and and Dr. Smith talked about the merits of the program. But you know, just briefly, I just would again underscore our our commitment um, as the Chancellor's Office. Um, and on, on behalf of our Board of Governors, um, there's a very, very strong commitment within our system to uh, bring into reality the, the full potential of this reform. And, and you know, I, I think that both of you described the, that vision, but, you know, clearly it has to do with streamlining the transfer process, um, making uh, it more efficient, more portable for our students in our community colleges around the state to transfer to any CSU. Um, uh, and, and and have a clear set of uh, of uh, pr preparation guidelines, of, you know, course requirements in order to, to do that. Um, the um, I uh, you know, and, and so the, the the commitment to that that vision and moving in that direction is is fundamental and and something we're we're um, going to continue working on. Um, the uh, and and I would like to also again acknowledge the the important role that that uh, Chancellor Scott, Chancellor Reed, and Senator Padilla played in terms of of creating a framework for us to move forward on this. The um, I think you know the reality is in less than two years since the, the legislation was enacted, um, we we as a state have, have made more progress on the transfer front than we probably have in the last 30 years in terms of, of policy, and I, I think we ought to celebrate that piece. You know, so some of the key advancements are, um, you know, as you say, the, the Implementation and Oversight Committee came together to uh, develop a framework uh, in terms of how these degrees would, would, would operate, in terms of how students earning the degrees at a community college, at a community college would be treated in the admissions process, and how, they, how, the, how the guarantee to the CSU system would be interpreted and implemented. Um, the IO, within the IOC, um, which just to put a face on it, it was, it's essentially it was a, it's a coming together of students, administrators, uh, teaching faculty, counseling faculty, um, and, and coming around the table to talk through the, the critical policy issues and, and you know somewhat and oftentimes complex issues in, that are involved in implementing reform of this magnitude. Um, the uh, you know the IOC also has, has um, strategized and developed um, plans and um, worked on imp implementing plans to uh, conduct outreach to community college students, uh, to the public, to let them know about this reform, so that we we can start um, um, draw drawing students in, into this new pathway and and uh, and 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 build it. The um, you know I, I I do think it's critically it's a, it's important that we give. Um, credit to the, the the academic senates in both the community college system and the CSU system. They 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 sit on the implementation and oversight committee and have provided great value in that venue. But the work that they've done on their own offline to develop these transfer model curricula, and um, which you know in a nutshell is is defining that 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 pathway those sets of course lower division and upper division courses that fit together to to offer a quality uh, bachelor's degree within 120 units um, the, uh, that work is 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 not easy it, it takes a great deal of, 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 of time faculty from the two systems come together 
they they discuss curricular issues issues of what what lower division preparation is essential in order to build into the the up, upper division components of the degree and um, they they dreamt up that vision of the TMC and they have worked to implement it so far within 22 disciplines uh, with more in the queue so that you know that that work um, could not have been done without the the, the vision and the, the hard work of our faculty and uh, we, we all owe them a great deal of, of appreciation for that. And so, you know, taking stock of where we're at now, um, we are actively in the process of having our colleges implement the degrees. And so far we have um, 39 of our colleges uh, have implemented five or more um, uh, of the, um, I, I think, actually I think I've got that wrong number, I, I, I think it's uh, 49 of our colleges have implemented five or more degrees. Uh, we've got 10 that have 10 or more of the degrees in place. Uh, Fullerton Community College and Pasadena City College are leading the pack with 17 degrees at Fullerton and 13 at Pasadena. And our uh, and our focus now is on um, charting the, the course for, for full implementation across our system. Uh, Chancellor Scott in uh, uh, um, about I think it was about four months ago, issued a, a, a statement to, to our colleges um, laying out the goals that where we're going to get to 80% um, of our, for each of our colleges, 80% of the uh, degree pathways are going to be built out under the 1440 degree. Um, the, the degrees are going to be approved by the two, 2013 year, and it will be 100% of degree uh, uh, transfer pathways will be in place by 2014. So those are the, the ambitious goals that the Chancellor Scott laid out there, and that our Board of Governors are very committed towards achieving. And so, you know, again, I guess in in closing, I just say that I, I think that um, I think it's really important to to celebrate the the tremendous victories that uh, have been accomplished so far, the great progress that's been made, and uh, and I, I think that that will be important in terms of motivating the the significant additional work we need to do to get to 100 percent impl implementation and again I, I would say on the part of the Chancellor's Office of the California Community Colleges on the part of uh, the Board of Governors uh, we are uh, firmly committed to uh, full implementation of the vision of, of this important uh, transfer reform so with that I'll, I'll wrap up my comments and uh, Michelle I'll be happy to be available for questions as um, at the appropriate time Thank you to both Dr. Smith and Dr. Skinner, um, and I think, you know, uh, Eric, you, you framed it very nicely. You know, at the end of the day, we can have a great idea, but it's the folks that are implementing it on the ground, the faculty leadership, both at the state level, the transfer coordinators and faculty at every community college campus that will make this uh, work or make it not work. And so I think um, our work is to support their efforts and to make sure that every college campus um, reaches uh, a high number of transfer degree pathway options for students so that they can move forward and, and reach their dreams. Um, for those of you on the line, we already have a few questions, so we're going to jump right into them. But if you have a question, you can just type it into the chat box at the bottom left of your screen. If you want it directed towards either myself or Dr. Smith or Dr. Skinner, please just note that in, in the remarks. Um, but I'm going to start with a question from Karen Swan, who asked, how do the TMCs uh, compare or overlap with the current TAG or TAA programs? Uh, maybe Eric, you want to tackle that one? Um, yeah, I, you know, I'll take a stab at it, and then maybe, maybe uh, Dr. Smith wants to weigh in. You know, I, I think that the, uh, the the eventual vision here is that these TMCs will will take the place of those tags. The, the tags were in, were a you know a process to try to establish some regional articulation and and guarantees. Um, but you know, with with the advent of the TMCs and the build out, I think that these really take the place. Uh, you know, I think that clearly we'll have a transitional period here where we've got to deal with with uh, both systems. But I, I think um, um, Dr. Smith may be able to speak to a little more how CSU is handling that piece of it. But it's the you know TMC is actually kind of bringing that idea to scale and and uh, establishing it in a transparent statewide way instead of a regional approach. 
Yeah, I I agree with uh, Eric that um, uh, the TMC in itself is like a statewide tag. So we're having one program. Um, I know by the legislation we didn't have to look at tags and uh, not until next fall, but um, I would assume that's what's going to happen. The TMCs will take the place of the tag agreements. Great, thank you. Um, so we have another question from Sandy Mendoza, um, directed to both Ephraim and Eric. Uh, As success in outreach and transfers grows, how will capacity at the college level handle it? Well, you know, I, I guess I, I, it's actually a good opportunity to, to reference a little bit just the global uh, uh, resource picture, which is keep in mind the progress we've been talking about so far, both on the community college side and the CSU side, have occurred during the, the period of most, the most significant budget cuts to the community colleges and CSU in, in their history. And so the ability to make progress on these fronts in that environment, I think, is phenomenal. And with the passage of Prop 30, I think it positions both our systems to make even more progress. And, uh, and the community colleges will be able to offer more of the key courses to allow them to build out these 1440 degrees. So rather than being in the mode of cutting and cutting and cutting course sections um, the way that we've had to do over the last couple of years, last four years, we uh, are going to be in the mode to be able to add the courses that are going to be essential for building these degrees. So Prop 30 and that stability uh, is uh, is important, and I know on the CSU side they've got a similar dynamic. So, Dr. Smith, right? Uh, I, because we just finished our open enrollment period for fall of 2013, and applications are up considerably. We're hoping with the passage of Prop 13, we'd be receiving uh, additional funds so that we could expand the base. Um, right now, we've been at our uh, uh, current student limits for several years, and meanwhile, applications keep on increasing. So, I mean, this is a good question. Uh, we're developing the pathways. Now, presumably if we have pathways developed and students are more efficient um, in the number of units they have to take, that in itself creates additional uh, seats for, for, for new students. But, uh, but yet the systems have to expand. We're turning away too many students. Yeah, I think this gives us a, a good reminder that we have to, and, and certainly the campaign will continue to advocate for adequate funding and support for our public universities and our community colleges, and I hope all of you on this call will certainly join us in that. We uh, were very active in pushing and pressing for passage of Prop 30 and are hopeful about that. And I think also, you know, to Dr. Smith's point is, there are more resources needed so that we can stop turning away eligible students. Almost half a million community college students were turned away because of the amount of course sections that were cut last year. That should be unacceptable to all of us. Um, but we also, I think, by full and strong implementation of this legislation and the transfer pathway, we are getting rid of the number of excess course unit taking that has been happening. Um, students will have a clear pathway. They won't be taking up extra units and therefore taking up a seat that another student can have. And I think that's equally important to the question of getting more resources to our colleges and universities. Um, we have another question from Helene Lacar. Given the obstacles to implementation, can SB 1440 enable the transfer process to address the needs of non-traditional students, older students, working students, veterans, or students who have already taken academic credits at institutions outside the public community college and CSU systems? Eric, would you like to tackle that first? Uh, I mean, sure, I'll take a stab at it. It's, um you know, I, I think that the, um, the the 1440 framework can, can definitely work for those, uh, you know, non-traditional students as well. You know, the basic concept is it's for for students who are, um, and you know, it's an opportunity to earn a, an associate's degree at a community college that that leads to a, you know, the direct pathway into a bachelor's degree. So if that's what the student's goal is, I think that will work for our non-traditional students. Um, uh, you know, equally as well, um, you know, perhaps for students who have significant amounts of, of uh, coursework already accumulated, um, you know, m you know, and again, this is a transi transitional issue. Um, it may, um, there may be a, um, um, 
you know, I guess essentially the uh, d depending on the individual student's circumstances, there may be a more efficient way for them to complete the the units they need to attempt to transfer. But uh, I think you know, for the vast majority of non-traditional students, this is going to be a viable pathway, and over time, uh, it will become the default pathway for for all our students, and it's really going to be the most effective uh, way for our, our uh, for for students to uh, navigate that transfer process. And, and I would point, I, I agree with Eric, and I, I think over time uh, there will be pathways uh, through the community college to the CSU for the non-traditional student. But I would point out currently for veterans, uh, they do receive priority, and we have programs at the CSU uh, for advising and counseling and uh, developing pathways for veterans. So that, that, that program is rich, and, it, and it's been um, a top priority now for a while. So we have a question from Hans Johnson. He'd like to know if um, we have uh, any idea how many students are in the pipeline for transfer degrees, um, and do the community colleges identify SB 1440 students? Well, that, so that is part of the system we're building out now, um, and it really gets into the kind of the nitty gritty of, of you know kind of how how the colleges operate and and how counseling and advisement and education planning happens in the colleges. Um, you know, I, I guess the, the quick answer is um, um, we, we have pretty limited knowledge of the pipeline at this point, but we are trying to build that out. We're building out some new reporting that our counselors will do to uh, provide information about students in the pipeline. So that, that's actually part of the process we're building out. And as we become more effective and more, more efficient in that uh, process of that tracking process, it's also going to assist CSU in terms of their ability to, to um, uh, manage their enrollments and, 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 make, and um, um, be prepared to accommodate all the 1440 students who are, who are coming through. So that's, that's, a, that's a work in progress. Yes, and, and, and this, this is actually a, a very important um, uh, question because when the legislation passed, it did not come with dollars for infrastructure. So the things that Eric's talking about that the community colleges are building, we are also building infrastructure to accommodate these students. But tracking and degree, degree pathways and the software to do this, um, we, we just don't have a, 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 a lot of the tools we need um, to make this information readily available. So this remains a challenge. Dr. Smith, maybe you want to also share how many students were actually um, SB 1440 eligible um, this fall. I know that several thousand students sort of clicked off that they were SB 1440 students when they applied, but only a few hundred were actually um, eligible. I, I sort of refer them uh, refer to them as in in some ways accidentally SB 1440 students because so many of these degree pathways were just being put in place. Um, and so if they, you know, had taken all the courses and they qualified, then, you know, it, it was early and, and good, good luck, right? But um, we really expect that in a year or two we'll start seeing the, the results of the legislation in terms of students coming through. Uh, that, that's absolutely correct. Last year the students that were applying had entered the community colleges before probably SB 1440 was signed. Therefore, these pathways were not created, so it was, as you say, accidental that they met the requirements of a pathway. It just happened if they had taken the courses that were ultimately put into the pathway, then they qualified uh, for the designation of being an SB 1440 student. But we would hope in the next uh, couple of years we'll start as the, we market the program more and students learn about the program, more will be intentional about the courses they take uh, for transfer because that's when we're going to see the savings and uh, uh, students not wasting units and whatnot. Right. And, and Michelle, so before but Michelle, before we get too far away from that question on uh, yeah. tracking, I I, I think I, uh, I would piggyback on um, Dr. Smith's point about resources, and I, I'd say that you know if state leaders are really interested in in accelerating progress on this in terms of implementation of SB 1440, you know, a, a relatively modest investment in some of these um, education planning and tracking tools for both the colleges and CSU could go a long ways towards building these systems out. You know, again, currently we're, we're doing these out of our hide, or, you know, currently over, you know, the, these sectors of our 
the colleges are, are you know, are critically understaffed to begin with, and so we're asking them to do additional reporting and tracking. A small investment to give some technology tools in particular to assist with that would be huge, as well as um, support for our faculty to do more of the, the articulation and the TMC development, uh, you know, talking about the specific curricular uh, connections between our colleges and, and CSU could go a long way. So these would be small investments in the scheme of things, but, um, um, you know, as long as we're taking it out of our hide, it's, it, it does, it does, uh, uh, it has, resources have been a challenge as we've done this. Um, so anyway, that's just, a, I guess, maybe a comment to state leaders that that's one way they could really support these efforts. Absolutely. So, so related to that, um, Alma Salazar this, uh, asked the next question directed to Eric. As business leaders and external stakeholders, what can we do uh, to support regional colleges in the implementation of SB 1440 pathways? Um, I'll just kick it off by, by sharing something I, I stated earlier, which is at the local level, you know, we should be asking our community college districts uh, for progress report on 1440 implementation. Certainly our board of trustees are a body that we should be going to to find out um, how our local colleges are doing. But Eric, do you want to also answer that question? You know, I, I would just concur with what you just said. I, I think we, we love it when when local business leaders are actively engaged with our colleges. It's it's a it's a great aspect of our system that we do have strong relationships in that regard. And I would just encourage um, you know all the stakeholders, including those those important business partners, to step up and and just say, uh, you know, ask for those progress reports and and communicate that that they they see the the, the you know the logic and the and uh, you know the sense in this reform, you know it's an important, straightforward reform that is long overdue, and uh, let's let's pull together and get it done for our students and for our uh, you know and for the state. You know we we need that. You know all all those all the studies show that we need to um, produce more um, highly skilled workers if we're going to compete as a state. And 1440 is p part of that strategy to improving our completion rates and our tra our successful transfer rates and. Uh, yeah, I, I, adding their their chorus to the lo local voice is always um, always uh, you know a, a smart a smart move. Great. I know several folks have asked what's the website that Dr. Smith mentioned earlier. It's a degree with a guarantee dot com, uh, and we'll also include it as we send out and post um, our materials um, online. Um, our next question comes from Caroline uh, Reisner. Uh, when will the issue of these degrees requiring 18 units in an area of emphasis truly be explored? Right now, these degrees require students in psychology, sociology, and communications to take more courses at the lower division level in the area of emphasis than are required for Native students at the CSU. As all of you uh, can tell, that certainly one, is one of our recommendations um, for moving this forward. I don't know if... Um, uh, Eric or Ephraim, you'd like to tackle that question? I, you know, I honestly, you know, I think it's, um, um, you know, I, it's, w you know, we're we're looking at that recommendation. I, you know, I think that the, you know, that the basic framework um, is, uh, you know, a, a, a key key concept here is that these degrees are intended to be um, associate degrees that that prepare a student for successful transfer. And so I think that the you know this this issue that um, really gets at that which is that we we've got to keep in mind that while the the vision is that these students will transfer to CSU um, part of the, the the you know a core concept that was part of 1440 and Michelle I know that you 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 commented on this in your earlier um, remarks is is that that lower division work needs to stand on its own. And so I think that these these unit these unit requirements are part of that that framework of making sure that there's integrity and strength to the to, to the uh, the associate's degree portion of the of of, of the you know of, of the articulated set of courses. And, and when the program was first uh, developed in our first meeting or two, when it was discussed, um, uh, that that was the point that was expressed that if a student will receive an associate of transfer stay in psychology, then they should have so many psychology courses. So, and 
also we, for the TMC process, we were developing so many 18 units in the major, and you have majors in business where it's very typical to have many courses. Then you have majors with as fewer courses. So this is a very complicated area, uh, and I'm sure we'll be discussing it uh, in the future at our uh, uh, IOC meetings. Thank you. This next question is for Eric. It comes from Terry Eden. Currently, there are associate degrees for transfer under the SB 1440 program, and there continue to be associate degrees for transfer not under SB 1440. The posted decrees appear very similar to students and advisors. Will this be clearer for students, advisors, and institutions in the near future? Well, I, I think that uh you know, in terms of, of under the framework of SP fourteen forty, uh, the, the the you know the, the um, I mean those degrees for for transfer are, um, I mean the, the only the only degrees for transfer that have been approved under SP fourteen forty are the ones that are aligned with the TMC, and so I, I think clearly that's the framework uh, going forward, um, and. Uh, you know, I, I think that, that that should be clear enough, and you know, if we need to take steps to 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 make make that clearer, I, I think we're prepared to do that. So, another question for you, Eric, from Dave DeGroote, uh, regards to the 100% goal for California Community College campuses to meet by fall 2014. The goal number is based upon the number of current Associate of Arts and A Associate uh, AS degrees that align with TMCs. Does that mean that current AA or AS degrees must have a corresponding transfer degree, or can the number goal be met with any of the TMCs that are available? No, it's it's within each discipline. So I, the the vision the vision is that it, that if if just to make it concrete, if an individual college offers um, associates degrees um, in you know five of the five of the the disciplines that are covered by TMCs. That by the 2014 year, they need to have a degree approved that will, under SB 1440, that in each of those areas. So, in, keep in mind, in many cases, it's a matter of taking the, the current degree, maybe with some small mod modifications, or um, sometimes, in some cases, with with uh, with no modifications through that vetting process, through that approval process in the chancellor's office, and we put that SB 1440 stamp of approval on it. So that's the process we're talking about. And so, it, no, I don't think it would be beneficial for students to have two degrees, a, a non-1440 degree and a 1440 degree. The idea is that, is that we're transitioning into a world where the, the default is, if it's an associate's degree that, that is within one of these TMC fields, and it exists for for a transfer purpose, that then that needs to be a for, uh, implemented as a 1440 degree. Great. Well, um, we tried to get to as many questions as possible. I know that there's a couple more out there, um, but I did want to turn it back over to Dr. Smith before he signs off uh, on our call today um, to just share any closing thoughts. Uh, with all of us, and again, just to thank both of you not only for making time today, but for the countless amount of hours and effort that both of your systems and your leadership have put forward to making sure that this promise of historic transfer reform is a reality. Uh, Dr. Smith? Uh, first, Michelle, I want to thank you for making the, uh, this webinar possible today so that we can uh, meet with people and answer questions on SB 1440. And as can be seen by the comments and the questions of the people participating today, much work remains to be done, but quite a bit of work has already be done and been done. And we've tried to thank those, especially the faculty that have worked so many hours in developing these programs uh, for their hard work. And um, I think one of our major challenges going forward is meeting with the students in the high schools now and the community colleges to make them aware of what we've done and what the pathways that are open to them and available to them are uh, so that they can t uh, uh, make use of them. And uh, I want to thank you again, Michelle. Thank you. Now, Eric, I'd like to give you the same opportunity to share your closing thoughts. 
Sure thing. Well, uh, you know, I, again, I, you know, I'd like to thank you for for making this forum available and to get information out about this important reform. Um, you know, I think that uh, um, you know, I the uh, the extra kind of you know kind of push in the back to keep moving forward is is always welcome. I know that's kind of how you're you, uh, you know was the focus of the report. I think I, I might have, if I was writing the report, I think I'd title a little, little bit differently. Maybe uh, great work, full speed ahead. But um, you know, I think we share definitely share a goal, and so we look forward to uh, the continued progress on this front. And it, I guess the last comment would be to just focus back on our students and and just realize that I think you know as we build these these degrees out, as we make them available, and students move through these pathways, that's what's going to create a um, the uh, I think our our students are going to demand. Uh, these 1440 degrees in 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 all their disciplines, and and that student demand is what's going to drive this, um, and they're going to demand it because they're they're more straightforward. They're going to allow the portability. They're going to allow the guarantee of admission at, in, into the CSU system. There are many benefits to these degrees, and um, as they are implemented and and available in our colleges, uh, I think that 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 student demand is really what's going to ensure that there's full and complete impl implementation of this reform, and uh, we look forward to that. And uh, in the meantime, uh, the Chancellor's Office and our Board of Governors will keep uh, moving full speed ahead on it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you, Dr. Skinner. Um, I'd like to thank all of you that joined us on this webinar to learn more, and I'd like to make sure that you know that you can access the full report um, on our website at collegecampaign.org. You can certainly call or email us if you'd like um, additional copies or if you have any questions that weren't answered. Um, as you know, our mission and vision is to really ensure that students um, have a clear opportunity to transfer from community college into the Cal State system, and that we also simultaneously advocate for the kinds of resources that our systems need to make this a reality. Um, we're really grateful for the amazing leadership that's taken place both through our chancellors at the community college and CSU system, as well as the IOC committee that has worked hard, um, had to deal with uh, internal disagreements and challenges, um, but pushed forward to ensure that these transfer model curriculum pathways, TMCs, as you've heard us say uh, many a times on this call, are developed. Um, we are grateful that there will be uh, hundreds of thousands of students eventually that will benefit from earning an associate degree and getting that guaranteed admission uh, to the Cal State system as juniors um, in the years to come, and we will continue to press forward and work with each of you to make sure that this happens. Again, this is a snapshot in time. We certainly expect to continue to report back on progress. Um, but until then, we look forward to working with you to moving this forward. And thank you all for joining us this morning in our presentation. So uh, on behalf of the Campaign for College Opportunity, uh, thank you, and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.